Hi everyone, my name is Eduardo Vela and I am a biomedical engineering student working in the National Institute of Health in the area of System and Statistics. Welcome to my presentation about Digital Surveys in Mobile Devices to Describe Exposition Risks to Pesticides, which is an example of implementation in Loma del Cayo Community, El Salvador. This work was then supported by the Environmental Health Area of the National Institute of Health. This presentation is divided into five sections. First, in the introduction, I will talk about the problem of pesticide exposition in Loma del Cayo community and how a tool for making digital surveys is applied. Second, the objectives of this work. Third, the methodology for building such a tool. Fourth, the preliminary results about the pesticide exposition of Loma del Cayo community. And finally, the preliminary conclusions. It is known that the excessive use of pesticides for agricultural production generates a negative impact in human and environmental health. This is the case of El Salvador, where the massive use of pesticides in crop fields allows nearby rural populations to be exposed to different types of pesticides, which in many cases are highly dangerous. Lomo del Cayo community is located in San Luis Talpa, in the Salvadorian coastal area. This is a poor community with basic services partially provided. It's surrounded by sugarcane fields and there is a close former pesticide factory. To describe the environmental exposure to pesticides, a survey has been conducted in Loma del Galle community. A tool was developed with free software for facilitating the survey data compilation. Over the past year, in August and September, a health emergency arose in the Loma del Cayo community for the increased cases of death for CKD. There were many speculations of the possible relationships of toxic substances from the abandoned factory. This event captured the attention of the media and allowed to open a discussion of regulation of pesticides in El Salvador. We want to determine the environmental and occupational exposure to pesticides of the selected community through an efficient way. Thus, we developed a digital tool for facilitate data collection in field. The traditional way of collect survey information is made using pen and paper. This way usually is slower and involves a tedious process of data digitization. The developed tool avoids this process allowing the storage of information in a digital database. Several tests were carried out in order to validate the tool. Two types of surveys were conducted. One related to an unoccupational exposure directed to general population, and another related to an occupational exposure only directed to farmers. For the non-occupational exposure survey, the universe are all the persons over 18 years, which are 73 persons of the community. A representative sample was calculated using EPIDAT 3.1 with an absolute accuracy of 10%. A sample of 41 persons, 56% of the population, was considered. For the Occupational Exposure Survey, 17 persons is the universe of all farmers over 18 years. All of them were surveyed. And also, all surveyed persons cite an informant consent. A series of free software packages was taken for developing the tool. These were integrated to create forms for digital devices. The result of this conjunction is identified as MOVI forms. In the next slides, I will briefly going to talk about the steps taken to make things work. This tool can be separated into two groups, a digital form and an Android application. We use Django, a web development framework for developing the digital form and creating a SQLite database. We developed an Android application through Java code that provides an easy way for extracting all data stored in the internal database. Here, I'm going to briefly describe the methodology taken to create a digital survey using the Django web framework. First, for Django execution, a virtual installation of Ubuntu is required. 
Series of Android applications are needed and they are available for free in the Google Application Store. They are Debian Kit for creating a virtual Linux machine, S Manager for executing some code in the final process, ConnectBot to open a local shell session in the Linux machine configuration process, SSH Droid to open an SSH client in the Django packages installation process, Android Terminal Emulator to open a terminal emulator in the Django execution process, and ES File Explorer to open a file explorer in the internal device memory. Then, through the virtual Linux machine, a Django project is created using the Django documentation guidelines. In this project, the questions of the survey are written in Python programming language. These questions are the template for database creation. To friendly access the digital form, a genetic user interface, Django compatible, available in web, was selected. The graphical user interface selected provides a visual representation of, of the survey. It is possible to choose simpler interfaces designed for smaller screens. If the survey have conditional questions, it's necessary to establish which questions are and write in the appropriate JavaScript code to deploy the several questions. The last step is write a little code to make the digital form to be available for the device. Here, I'm also going to briefly describe the methodology to create an Android app for exporting data to a spreadsheet file. To develop the application, first I created an Android project using the Google Developers site guidelines. Some special libraries I needed to create a Microsoft Excel file. Some codes are needed to open in and to query the database and to create the spreadsheet too. A summary of most relevant information about the database is designed and made with this code. A single spreadsheet is created for each database table. And some little code is written to send the created spreadsheet by email. According to these results, the majority of population surveyed in Oma del Gallo have lived between 6 to 15 years in this place. The majority of population have been exposed to fumigation by plane due to this community it's nearby to sugarcane fields where the common pesticide uses glyphosate to accelerate the process of maturation of the cane. A lot of inhabitants have perceived different smell from factory. This population had no water service until a few days ago. The majority have drunk water from different sources like nearby rivers and wells also. According to educational level, few farmers have primary education and could be classified as semi-literate with poor reading skills. The majority of farmers have used pesticides for more than 10 years. The common pesticides known and used in this area are Volaton, Ranger, Paraquat, Paration, MTD600, Lanate, Edonal, Glyphosate, Hesaprim, Folidol, and urine. And the majority of the farmers work without using any kind of personal protective equipment. The results have identified two forms of exposure. Farmers who are exposed to different types of pesticides and have worked without the use of personal protective equipment. And general population who are exposed to intensive use of pesticides in the nearby sugarcane fields and the abandoned factory where highly toxic pesticides were formulated. Finally, MobiForms is a tool that supports investigation allowing data collection directly in digital format. These digital surveys reduce the amount of time taken in data collection and optimization in management and storage of information. Even though MobiForms use a web interface, doesn't require internet connection for its execution. Thank you very much for your attention.